If you are in business working with your spouse and maybe it's causing like a little bit of friction. Listen, I'm telling you, you getting on my last nerve. Yo, I sign up for this. We can totally relate because we have been there. Uh, when we first started working together, I was kind of chaotic and uh, I would kind of like come home in a whirlwind and need all of these things right this minute. And I think I was pretty stressful to work with. Would you agree? No. <laughs> No. Not really. Only because he's lying and I being nice. I think you were just being you. I'm Amy Walker, small business strategist. And I'm Stephen Walker, the one who makes things happen. That is very true. So we have been running our company together for how many years? Eight? Eight years? At least eight. Ish? Yeah. No, longer, because we had our, we started our business uh, right when our last son was born, and he's eight and a half. So yeah. we've been in this for a little while. It's been actually a huge blessing to be able to work together, but there was definitely some things that we needed to change in order to make it work. So we're going to give you guys our six tips. You ready? Tip number one, know your role and responsibilities. It makes things go a lot more smoothly when everyone kind of stays in their own space of genius and what they're responsible for. You know what, Gary? I asked you to do one thing today, one very simple thing, to bring me 12 lemons, and you brought me three. God damn it. If I knew that it was going to be this much trouble, I would have brought home 24 lemons. Amy does things that are really different from what I do, and what I do is really different from what Amy does on a day-to-day -day basis. and so. We just give each other our own space to thrive, and it just enables us to get things done much better and in a way that we can be sane a little bit. Yeah, and it allows you to not micromanage your spouse because they're responsible for their roles, you're responsible for yours. Tip number two is to play to your strengths and really stay inside of your zone of genius. Like, I'm very good at big picture and momentum and making stuff happen. I struggle with details. So like if we go on vacation and I'm the one packing, we get there and I'm like, oh, no one has socks. We probably need socks. Let's go to the store and buy some socks. Whereas like Steven's really great at details, but not necessarily um, the person who's going to be like driving the momentum and, and setting the intentions for where we're going. So we kind of just like to stay where we're good. Tip number three, be respectful of space and time. Leave me alone. I'm not very good at this one. Yeah, well, I don't know <laughs> if I'm a saint either. You know, when things happen and in that moment, you feel like you need the other spouse, you feel like your thing is more important than the other person's thing. And maybe that's just life in general, but that definitely translates into business as mm -hmm. well, especially on a day-to-day -day basis. And so if I know that Amy, for example, is in the middle of working with a client on a pre-scheduled call, and Maybe I feel like I need her in that moment, but the reality is that that's the case. And I just say, you know what? I will just wait until this time where I know that she is done. And, uh, and so allowing that time for people to thrive is important. I think just space as well. Like you all have your defined space of genius and where you're gonna be working and what you're gonna be working on and the different projects and the things and where your focus is. And so allowing that person to work on those things and not just getting into their business all the time, um, except just to coordinate and collaborate where needed. I think that's really important. Yeah, a lot of times we'll go through our day and we touch base in the beginning of the day, we touch base in the end of the day, and then throughout the day we're each working independently and able to manage and control our own schedule. I think the thing that I have a hard time with though sometimes, and maybe this is my improvement zone, is that I have very few windows in between client calls. And so it's like, I'll get a window and I, I feel like I need to do everything that he's needed to coordinate with me right then. And he may not have time for it right then. So that's probably our, our area of improvement or mine. Well, just stir in a little bit of patience and yeah, as Guns N' Roses said, it will work <laughs> itself out pretty good. Patience. Go look that up. Go look that up. Okay. You need to have the hard conversations. You cannot avoid them, but you also need to have them at the right time. So um, I have a tendency to be more like just direct, just say it, just get it out, just move on. And um, 
he's not always in a space where it's like the right time to have that conversation. And so I've had to learn that like, yes, we need to have those conversations, but we don't need to have them at the first moment when it occurs to me that there's something I want to talk about. Like we need to actually schedule time to talk about those things so that those conversations go well. I love you. <laughs> Uh, my wife's making her famous deviled eggs again. My waistline's furious. It's a bad time, Bob. All right. Tip number five would be date nights. I know you work hard, honey, but you know what would make all the hard work 10 times easier? Me. Life gets crazy and when you're an entrepreneur, it is easy to say, hey, I'm gonna work six or seven days of the week, every day, every morning, afternoon, evening, and just never stop. There is an endless amount of things to do. And so if you don't just have a pre-established uh, understanding between you and your spouse that you need to make time for yourselves, then you need to revisit that. Yeah. Each week you need to set aside time to do that. For us, that's normally gonna be on a Friday night or a Saturday night, maybybe a Saturday day. Sometimes we sneak out for lunch though. That's true. And every weekend. once in a while, like we just play hooky, like we'll go away for, you know, a weekend or just like take a day off. Um, just because I think it's really important that you keep the stress levels low and you keep the relationship strong. Otherwise, it's a lot of work for not as much happiness. Good tip. I like that tip. Okay, my last tip is to have a hierarchy. Are you in charge here? Yes, I nope. am. Wrong. What? Me. I'm in charge. Is Me. Major Ben charge. So I think in a lot of businesses where you're working together, one one spouse started it, and then the other spouse comes in as kind of the support spouse, and so the spouse who started it has a tendency to feel like they're the one who should control all the decisions, or on the flip side is whichever spouse has a stronger personality um, feels like they should have the final say in everything. And so we have created a hierarchy where within his roles and responsibilities, he has the final say. Um, within my roles and responsibilities, I have the final say. And then because I am the CEO of the company and I work with so many of the departments, if what's going on in his department is going to affect one of the other departments, then I can say, no, we can't do that because it's going to affect this department negatively. But it, there are moments where like, I have to just say, okay, it's your department. That's what you want to do. And like, I got to zip it and say, I support you in that because those again are your roles and responsibilities, but it keeps a lot of, I feel like conflict or arguing about who's right or who's wrong to just say, that's your department. You get to decide and whatever you decide, I support you. Um, and then the only times that I would step in is if like, like he's over marketing and finance. So I'll step in if there's something like, no, but this is going to affect sales. So we need to revisit that again. So yeah, I think the most important thing is whenever the occasional sticky conversation does come up where maybe you feel differently than your spouse about a particular topic, um, that's okay. And I think the number one thing for me is just to remind myself, you know what, just take a step back and take a deep breath and try to put yourself in the shoes of your spouse or the other employee or department that it's affecting and say, and sometimes you just have to say, you know what, this decision is going to kind of stink for me slightly, but most often you can find the good overall for the company. And so as long as you both are invested in the common goal and cause, which is for the company to be successful and for it to be good for you and your family, that pretty much resolves all the conflicts that come up. Okay, so that tip made me think of a bonus tip. So my bonus tip is, honestly, I think one of the biggest reasons why we've been able to work together so well is because we have the same ultimate goal, and we, which is to have a strong relationship and a strong family. And we frequently have really cool opportunities in business that we just decide not to do because it's not in alignment with the ultimate goal, which is we want a strong relationship and we want a strong family. So, you know, even when there's really cool things, if it's not gonna take us where we wanna go in the end, the answer is no. Yeah, and that should probably be tip number one. I know, that was the best one, huh? Yeah. We didn't even write it down. Establish your common goals. 
What are your common goals? Why are you even working together in the first place? Why are you doing it? What's it all, what's it all for? Amen. <laughs> All right, my friends, thank you so much for joining. Uh, you will probably not see Stephen again for a long time, huh? Because he hates being on camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, we appreciate you being here, and we'd love to hear from you in the comments. So if you have any questions for us, please let us know. We'd be happy to answer. If you are new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe so that you can get tips to help you be able to grow your business. And uh, if you'd like to join a community of like-minded entrepreneurs where we can continue the conversation, please head over to our Acquire Facebook group. Go check out our other video, Entrepreneur Couples, How to Support Your Entrepreneur Spouse. Maybe you're not married to an entrepreneur uh, and you want them to know how to support you or you are married to an entrepreneur but you're not one. So that's a great video to help you in your journey as well. We appreciate you being here with us today and we can't wait to see you back again.